An interesting thing happens with properties. You might have noticed that we use strings to set the property values. This is the only valid thing we can use for an XML attribute value. However, in most cases, the actual property value is not a string at all. Here we will look at five different properties being set, each with a different type. Text is a string. No conversion is necessary. Rotation is a double, which can be converted from a string. Vertical options is an enumeration type and is matched to the name. Font is a complex object that uses a type converter. Color is a simple object, which also uses a type converter. Type converters have been in .NET since 1.0 and are used to take strings and turn them into some object type. You can write your own type converters and associate them to your own types to make them XAML friendly, but the system provides many of the common ones you might need. Most of the built-in classes in Xamarin Forms have associated type converters so they can be easily created in XAML. For example, as you can see here in the label, you can customize the font by setting the font attribute property to values such as bold and italic or a combination by separating them with a comma. The system will assume this to be a flags-based enumeration and apply the bitwise or of the values. The font size property can be specified as a numeric value which is translated to a platform size, such as density pixels on Android. Or you can use a name size such as small, medium, or large, which is mapped to the platform using device-specific sizes. The color type converter supports creating colors from the named color set available in code behind, or using the HTML hex syntax. The thickness converter supports the creation of a thickness object using a single number, two numbers, or four values for each edge. These variations match the constructors you use in code behind. Type converters are great for simple property settings, but in some cases we really need to create a full object with its own property values to assign to the property. Remember that in XAML to create an object we use an element tag. The solution to this problem is to change the property assignment to use an element-based syntax. This is called the property element form, and it involves breaking the property setter out into the parent-child form where the property name is expressed in an element tag with the name type.propertyName, as shown here with the box view gesture recognizer. The child tag is then expressed as an element tag, which creates the object and assigns it to the property. Anytime you need to create a new object, set properties, and then assign that object to the property of another object. Another interesting property type is the attached property. Recall these are special properties which are not actually defined on the type at all, but are instead defined by some other object, typically a parent, and then added as runtime values to each child. We use these for layout purposes to indicate where each child should be placed. Here you can see how we set attached properties in XAML. It looks like a normal property, except we have the owning type prefixing the name of the property. Anytime you see a type prefixing the property name like this, you know it is an attached property. With many types in Xamarin Forms, you have a single property that is used to supply content. On a label or a button, this is the text property. On a layout container, this is the children property. And on the content page, this is the content property. These properties are almost always set, and so XAML allows for an interesting shortcut in their assignment. You can, of course, set them like any other property using the syntax we've used up to this point. However, you can also set this property by simply putting the value between the open and close tag of the object itself. For example, compare the top and bottom values. We can fully break out the content page.content property or omit the property element and just set the label as a child tag. These will set up exactly the same object graph. This is referred to as the content property, and it's established by a little metadata added to the type through a custom attribute on the class definition. It's a nice convenience, particularly for the layout container, so we don't have to use the property element syntax to set the children. Xamarin Forms associates almost all the built-in namespaces with the default namespace declared at the top of the XAML file. That's why you don't need to specify the namespace for a button as part of the tag. This definition will change for each technology you work with. There is a second namespace defined named X. This will be the same definition no matter what technology you are working with, and it defines all the available XAML keywords. 
This is also where you will find intrinsic CLR types like strings, integers, and doubles. These two namespaces will be present in every XAML file you create. XAML can actually create almost any object type, not just Xamarin Forms types. To create a custom type, you need to supply the namespace yourself. This is also done through an XML namespace tag. However, instead of a URI, you use a special syntax that identifies the CLR namespace and assembly where the type or types you want to use are located. You can see the syntax here displayed on the screen. The assembly identity is made up of four items referred to as the four-part assembly, although it is often shortened to just be the assembly simple name. Note this doesn't include the extension, so don't include .exe or .dll. The assembly portion is only required if the type is not in the current assembly. So if you are creating local types that are defined in the same assembly as the XAML file, then you only need the namespace. You can still include the assembly if you like, but it is optional. You can define a custom namespace either on a specific element or at the root element where it can be shared across multiple child elements. Here you can see a definition for a systems.collection.generic list where the T is identified as a system.string. There's a couple of cool things here. First, unlike WPF, you can instantiate generic objects using the XAML keyword X colon type arguments to supply the specialization type. This comes from the XAML 2009 specification and is supported by the Xamarin parser. Second, notice the string is defined as X colon string. This is also part of the XAML 2009 spec, which defines all basic intrinsic types in the XAML X namespace. You can, of course, also create strings by defining a custom namespace against system and Microsoft Core Library. This is exactly what we must do on most of the Microsoft platforms, but with this support, it's not necessary.